Mic check, one, two, mic check, one, two, one, two, one, two. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another edition of the Mic Check, hosted by the Mo with the Mouth, no doubt. It's your host, Project MC. And listen, we have a very, very special guest in the building today. We have the one, the only, Miss Damon Day is on the call with us. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go! Whoa, I know she's here. I think she's in the waiting room. Let's go ahead. Making it. How are you? Uh, I'm great. You know what I mean, as you see, oh, video went out. We did, wow. Yeah. Oh, I got it. Um, I'm feeling good. You know what I mean, you know me. Energy is always high. It's always cool in the building. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, for those of y'all who don't know Damon Day, Damon Day is a super talented artist. She is a poet, a singer, a great songstress, songwriter. Um, she's amazing. She's like. Ja like shy, so she be like killing. She be like downplaying all of her greatness. So, so uh -uh. like, don't downplay your greatness. But yo, she's really really dope. She's finally getting into putting out music, so that's exciting. I know it's very exciting. Um, thank you. But yeah, let's go ahead and, and dive right into it. How did you get your 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 beginning into art as a whole, whether it be song or poetry? How did you start off? With? Um, honestly, I started in church, like most people, um, singing in the choir, and then in school, I was in chorus, but I didn't really, like, take it seriously until I was about, like, 10 years old, because my stepdad, he did music, and he, um, helped me a lot with, like, writing my songs and, um, like, making beats and stuff for me, but still then, I wasn't taking it as seriously as I should have until like now i guess so when with doing that right how would you say you you've grown since you started this journey um i've grown a lot because well i'm still shy but now i'm able to like go on stage and perform like back then i used to be so scared i used to cry to go on stage <laughs> yes i used to cry um that's about it, mainly, I think. Well, my voice has grown, obviously. I'm older, learned a lot of new things, studied a lot of new artists, and a lot of old artists, too. What's one of your, your, your my favorite artists? Um, my favorite artists would be Lauryn Hill, Eric Badu, Jill Scott. Um, today, I love Summer Walker, SZA, Janae, all of those artists. Would you, yeah. uh... If you had to choose between, because I, I play this game, pick one, right? We have to like pick one artist to be deleted forever between SZA, Summer Walker, and Lauren Hill. Who you deleting? Mm -hmm. Who you deleting forever? Right. You gotta pick one. Oh, you said deleting? Yes, deleting. Like one gotta oh. go forever. Hmm. Between SZA, Summer Walker, and Lauren Hill. Mm-hmm. Probably Summer. Summer? <laughs> yeah, summer. Why why summer? Why? Because I just feel like Summer like, got a bigger like, Summer got a bigger body of work. I, I know, but she's she's great. Like, don't get me wrong, she's great. She's amazing. But I just love Scissor's voice. It's so unique and different. Mm -hmm. Like she don't have like a lot put out, but 
I feel like if she did, it would be just phenomenal. Okay. Mm-hmm. Lauren Hill, that's just Yeah, that's that's Lauren. Yeah, I, that's I, just, I, right. Lauren, that's that's a whole different conversation. That's understandable. Um right. what would you say is your biggest motivation when it comes to your art? My biggest motivation is definitely my stepdad because he passed away a few years back and he was heavy into music. So I would like to carry on that legacy for the both of us. Because I, I love music too, but it's mainly for him. That's dope. What would you say, of all the different things when it comes to music, um, what about it captures you the most? Um, That would have to be the different emotions that it puts you through. Like when you listen to different types of songs, the different emotions that you feel when you listen to them, it's just a great feeling. That's dope. So that would, yeah. <laughs> so, especially when like the range of emotions you can go through from just one song to the next. Like you can have one yeah. R&B, the other joint be some hardcore OC hip hop. And it's just like the mm-hmm. fact that the music can bring out the emotions. It's versatile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's why I especially love artists who who dip, dip and dabble in different genres because it's <laughs> yeah shout out to the homies in the back tell them they all good they all good um, all right. <laughs> but now nah, it's, it's really dope to know that music allows you like i said artists when it's so versatile mm-hmm. and can go from one genre giving you one emotion to the next to the next it's really dope yeah. how that all comes from one person um i gotta ask you what would you say has been the most meaningful piece, whether a poem or a song that you've written, like the one that hit closest to home? The most meaningful um, would have to be a song that I, that's on my EP called Be My Homie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because, well, my EP didn't come out yet. It's supposed to come out this Saturday, August 22nd. Okay, new but, music. Okay, new music. <laughs> but yeah, um, that song basically is basically about like uh it's about uh these three guys that I've been dealing with that I've been in love with I guess at the and same time no what to say <laughs> no like you know over time mm. and <laughs> like within and two weeks of each other say less no say less. no. Um, it's basically about them and how I decided to do what's best for myself as a person. And I think that song really does a good job portraying that. That's real. That's real. I think that's important to touch on. Um, that's real life stuff, right? You will be with someone and then you realize that essentially staying in that position is not the healthiest thing for you whether it be mm. emotionally mentally physically and right a lot of times people feel like they have to stay because of whatever circumstance whether it be you know say you have a kid involved or say they feel like the other person like starts blaming them like oh, i'm suicidal now you leave me. You know, stuff like that which, like, um so yeah I, I, I really that's dope uh i can't wait to hear the project Right, you've been singing. I've heard you saying, "I'm like, dog. Unless you don't put out music, unless you don't put out music, <laughs> you don't know all these poems and stuff. You don't know all these poems. Ain't got no music out there." So I'm really excited. Okay. Um, what else can you tell us about this upcoming project? What else can I tell you? Um, well, basically, the main the project is about those three guys. Literally, it's only like eight songs on there, okay. and they each, they each have their own song, and then I threw like a little poem in there. That's about, uh, I combined all of the things that these guys have said to me, and I put it all in a poem. Uh-huh. It's like a letter to me that I wrote it. I don't know. It's weird. Um, no, you good. <laughs> well, yeah, that's, that's the whole project. It's about them. And it's not like to bash anybody because, you know, that um, life is about experiencing so I'm grateful for each and every moment that I had with them. Um, but yeah, it's just about heartbreak and life experiences. That's dope. That's real, real dope. So when you were going into the making of this project, what was what did it feel like? I mean, going to the studio to record your first project that you're putting out, what, what did that feel like for you? 
um, I was lost. I was really lost because I didn't know what I was doing. But I had these two, uh, these two guys um, that helped me a lot with, um, with like uh, the resources, like the studio times, the um, the cover art, my photo shoots, and all that stuff. And it really helped me because I really didn't know what I was doing in the, at all. That's good. That's good. It's good to have a support system around us. That's, that's real, real dope. I know you from BMO, right? I hear, mm. hear it th thorough, thorough in the accent. I love it. I don't have an accent. <laughs> <laughs> um, what would you say has been the, the amount of influence that being from Baltimore has had on you as a person, um, musically, artistically, and just, and just in general? I don't really notice the influence that it had on me, but growing up, like music just always been a part of my life. So mm -hmm. it's just music everywhere. Like my family love music. So I guess that's a way it influenced me. Okay. I'm, yeah, I don't really. That's real. Because sometimes you do have, and, 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 that's, and that's normal. Sometimes you, you grow up in an environment where it doesn't necessarily contribute too much. So mm. how you were brought up in terms of like outside of your own household, um, more right. so just your household and yeah. really get all the, the nurturing for you. So that's what I'm saying. Um, mm. So with being a, a college kid, right? Because we both go to, to Bowie State. Mm. What, is it, what is it like trying to manage being in school as well as being an artist as well? What's that balance like? Well, I didn't start like really getting into like my music, like writing, I mean, like recording my stuff until the summertime. So I'm not sure like how that's gonna work as far as like school mm -hmm. and making my music. But I don't think that's gonna be a problem, especially since class is online this semester. Right, right. right. So I'm gonna have, have a lot of time. How you dealing with this whole COVID thing, right? Since being, having to stay home majority of the time, how have you adjusted to it? Um, well, I've been going on with life, you know, wearing the mask everywhere I go. <laughs> I'm still going out, like, to the malls and stuff. And I just came back from New Orleans over, like, last couple weeks ago, maybe. Okay. okay. Yeah, so I'm just trying to go about life as it's, okay. like, as regular as I can. Social distance, though. Don't be all up around folks. Yeah. Talking around you when not. Yeah. No mask on. Um, are you ready for this upcoming semester? With everything being mostly online, you ready? Um, honestly, I wish that we was on campus, but I guess I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, some of the classes that I have, I don't understand like how I'm gonna do it online, but I guess I'll find out. Like what? What's some junk you got? I got like music class. I'm supposed to be playing instruments and stuff. And then I got like Pilates. That's a class. Huh? Yes. Yeah. They got acting classes, but yeah, I guess we just gotta do it on Zoom, and they're gonna look at us. What would you say has been when you think of black art, right? So whether it be dance, music, poetry, what would you say is the impact that black art has on the world? The impact? Yeah, the impact that black art has. It has a big impact on the world. Like, I feel like black music, black dancing was the root of everything as far as like other form, other, um, other dances, other styles of music. I feel like that's the root of everything. Uh -huh. That's true. Because I, I especially hate it when like, mm -hmm. You have non-black people, especially like white people, who try to take credit for certain things mm -hmm. done by like a black artist, or just a black right. in general. It's like, fam, why are you going to sit up there and lie when we can pull up receipts of history yeah. that show is like, nah, we started this. Um, yeah. yeah, or if they yeah try to take something and then rename it. Um, first thing that comes to mind is hair. Like, mm -hmm. how, 
um, particularly black women will be shamed. Well, black men and women, but mostly black women, mm -hmm. be shamed for certain hairstyles. And then a white woman does it, and it's new, innovative, trendy. And it's like, fam, y'all just called that ghetto like two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And that was cool. Yeah, yeah. It's like that That right there is. And that's why I always ask that question, like, what is the impact to you that it has? Cause it's I don't pay that stuff no mind. Like, I wear my hairstyles, my natural hairstyles. As you should. <laughs> As you should. Because yeah. it's, it's, it's annoying to see how the the appropriation is be like so blatant in our yeah. eyes. It's like we was just doing this like a bunch of years ago and now you take it. All right, I see what's happening, y'all. I see. Mm -hmm. Um but now nah, what would you what would you say is your biggest goal in music, right? Because it's always asked that when you get into music, you gotta know what you want to do, um, where you want to take yourself. So honestly, you honestly I'm not exactly sure That's about fair. like what my goal is, I just know I'm gonna make music. I wanna be able to inspire people. Um, the money part, I guess that's that's gonna come. I'm not really pressed about like the money part and stuff. I just wanna be able to do something that I love and do it for a career. That's it. I like that. I like that. Not necessarily care more about the art and the craft yeah. more than the business side. Cause you got folk who get into music just for the mm -hmm. music of it, just to make quick money. And it's like, I personally don't like people who don't care for the music. Mm -hmm. Just only doing it just for monetary gain. Because it's like, I, I don't want to hear that. You doing it for yeah. reasons to me. That's just my personal jump. Um, yeah. I want to play a game with you, right? It's a new jump. You want to play a game with me? Yeah, just something, something new I created called Dream Song. Right? So pretty much with Dream Song, I'm going to give you a name and then explain the theme behind the name, and you have to tell me the artist that you envision on this song, right? Okay, I think I understand. Yeah, yeah, so I'm gonna give you a theme, and you just name the people that you could hear on this song, right? Gotta give me at least three people. Three? At least three, all right? The first right. one, the name of this song is called I Want You. It is a song about a man dating a woman but really wanting to choose his woman's sister. Um, Usher. <laughs> okay, Usher. It could be more um, than three, but at least three. Um, Usher. Who else? Sorry. Usher. All right, Usher, so far. Miguel. Okay, Miguel. Um... Mm. You said three? At least three. And, and Trey Songs. Usher, Miguel, <laughs> Trey Songs. All right, so whose song is it and who's featuring? You said whose song is it? Yeah, like who's the main person, whose song it is? Usher. Usher, all right, Usher. Usher featuring Miguel and Trey Songs. I want you. All right, I rock with that. I like the hard sound. Any particular reason you chose mm. those three? Because they just seem like the type that would make a song like that, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> All right. So I want you feature uh, Usher featuring Trey Songs and Miguel. All right, cool. We'll let that one rock. Next one, More Than Friends, a song about being in love with your best friend. Janae. <laughs> Janae Ayeko. All right. Featuring... Uh... You said being in love with your best friend. Mm -hmm. Song about being in love with your best friend. Uh, I gotta give you time. Pull up. Um, am I like, am I being Tom? I should pull up with Tom, but you're not. So you. No, oh, okay. Um, hi, I'll show again. I sure. And I go featuring Usher and Nicki Minaj. Okay, I Nicki guess. Minaj. Mm, that's Jay. that's three. That's three. Do you want to add another one? You good with those two? No, I'm good. <laughs> Janae Ayeko featuring Usher and Nicki Minaj. Mm -hmm. Interesting pair. All right, cool. Let that one gonna rock. This next one is called Lucky Me, a song 
about a woman finally being with the man of her dreams after having such bad luck with past relationships. Lucky me. Lucky me. Um, Summer Walker. Summer featuring. Featuring. Um. Hard. <laughs> Keisha Cole. Ooh, okay. Okay. Getting the Keisha Cole back. Okay, let's get it. Ooh, Summer Walker and, and Monica. Ooh! Summer Walker featuring Keisha Cole and Monica. Uh, yeah. I'm, yeah, I would like to hear that song. Yeah, that, yeah, that's nice. <laughs> um, that's probably my favorite one so far. Lucky me. All right, bet. Next one, Endless Cycle. A song about two people who always fight, break up, See other people and then come back to each other. Um, you said break, they break up, they break like, up, uh, see other people and then come back to each other. They always do that, endless cycle. Um, K Michelle. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> um, mm. Sorry, Chris Brown. K. Hey, Michelle featuring Chris Brown. All right. Who, 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 who the last one? Um, Rihanna. Mm. Yeah, you going to put Chris Brown, Rihanna? You know what? <laughs> K. Hey, Michelle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It's all good though. It's all good though. K Michelle featuring Chris Brown and Rihanna. All right. I like to hear that. All right. And last one to close up Dream Song, you got Hoodie Weather. Hoodie Weather is a song about naming the possessions of a man that you love to hold or wear when he's not around. Hoodie Weather. Oh. Cause you know women love to take the the man's hoodies. That is. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Sade. Mm. This is a woman. Mm. This is a woman with taste, ladies and gentlemen. Woman with taste. Her. Uh, her. Um. And you said three. <laughs> and Erica. Mm. Sade. Her and Erica. Okay. okay. All right. And last thing to wrap this game up, out of all the songs that you've heard, which one are you most eager to hear? The last one. That just said. Hoodie Weather? Yeah. You said Erica, Sade, and, and her. Correct. All right. Okay. Okay. Solid. Solid. I don't disagree with none of the picks. You you obviously know your stuff. So I'm I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Mm -hmm. Um, so before we wrap up this interview, right, is there anything that you want to say, anything you want to get off your chest, any promo stuff, drop your IG, your, your social media, um, I do that. My Instagram is Damon A, D-A-M-E-N-A-I-I, -I -I, two I's. Um, my project, Living Single, drops August 22nd, so this Saturday, uh -huh. so make sure y'all be on the lookout for that, and that's it. Well, Damon A, I appreciate you stopping by my check. It's always a pleasure to hear from you and talk to you because you don't be answering the phone. I mean, you I both do. know that. No, you don't. <laughs> you don't. You don't text. Don't do none of that. Do none Much of better. that. Yeah, please, please. I'm looking forward to the music. Um, nothing but the best of wishes for you. Again, I'm ready to hear some music. I'm ready. All right? All better right. be fired. I'm gonna hit you up as now. It better be fire. I bet I hit okay. it. It better be fire. It's fire, right? It's fire. Yes, it's fire. All right, all right cool. Damon A, thank you. Appreciate you. All love. Um, I'll talk to you later. All right. All right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that has been another edition of Mike Check.
Listen, listen. Only here do we feature the biggest, the baddest, the brightest, and the best of stars from all different walks of life. Make sure you stay tuned every Friday to my check. Again, thank y'all. Love y'all. Peace, power, and prosperity. We out.